hey everybody how's it going um this video is going to be a little bit personal to me uh everybody knows me i'm a diehard sports fan but there, there's just one probably one team you don't talk about more than others to me that i'm really deeply passionate about and it's about my new york knicks um uh, this video is more going to be it's going to be some jeremy lynn discussion at the end of the video and and some uh off season what i think they've been doing this off season so um first let me start off with the off season. Um, I think the Knicks have done. Gren Grunwald has done a phenomenal job, in my opinion, um, with with what he's doing this off season. When it comes from getting Raymond Felton and Jason Kidd to significantly upgrade the point guard position, um, two guys who are veteran guys who has a play. Raymond Felton who has nine games of playoff experience. Jason Kidd has numerous amounts of playoff experience. Uh, NBA champions, been to the finals three times, uh, twice with the New Jersey Nets in his prime. Um, I really like what Kid, Kid brings a Chauncey Billups type of mentality to this team. How how Chauncey always reminded me. That's why the one thing I always thought about was what Chauncey said at the end of that Boston series, where the Knicks need a point guard who has an alpha male mentality of a, of a guy that can tell Amari, no, you're not getting the ball. A guy that can tell Melo, no, you're not getting the ball here. And I think Jason Kidd is something that a, a guy that can bring that. And you bring him on with a guy like Raymond Felton, who 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 was here in New York. A, no less than 18 months ago, months ago, who people were like, we didn't want to give up Raymond Felton in the Carmelo Anthony deal until they found out they got Chauncey Billups and a guy who was an all-star snub. Now, it's a totally different system, but you got to remember that Raymond Felton was the starting point guard and probably and the lead guy leading that, that Charlotte Bobcats team led by Larry Brown, who... Who is who? Mike Woodson is one of his disciples, so you know that Mike Woodson had to talk with Larry uh, Larry Brown about Raymond Felton, and I think that's the reason, that's the one of the main reasons why uh, Raymond Felton is here in the here as a Nick as today. So I think I think that those two guys significantly upgrade the point guard spot. Uh, you think about a guy like J.R. Smith, who who gets a bad rap in in in, in New York, especially after the playoffs that he had, but everybody has to remember that. He was asked to do something, some things that he's not really comfortable doing. J.R. Smith is a guy of who can get his own shot, who's one of the top five athletes in the in the NBA. There's no there's no doubt about that. Uh, but he was a guy who was asked to run the point, set up an offense, play combo guard a little bit because the Knicks were decimated in injuries at the point guard position, and, and and Mike Bibby was the only available point guard really that the Knicks had. And Tony Douglas, who wasn't really a point guard as well, so he got thrown into a bad situation. So everybody say, yes, J.R. Smith is a guy who can shoot you out of games, but he's also a guy that if he's hot, there's nothing you can say about him. He's a guy that can score 30 if he's hot, and that's something that the Knicks really need—a guy who can give you that pop. And it doesn't matter if he's starting right now until Amon Sherbert comes back and coming off the bench. He's a valuable piece of this Knicks team. Every team needs a guy that can give you that pop off the bench and, and, and especially if you're going to lose a guy if a guy like Amari's going to come out and, and or Melo's going to come out you're going to need that other guy who can be able to get his own shot create his own shot because I think he's an upgrade over Jeremy Lin no doubts about it he's an underrated defender in my opinion and like I said he's a guy that's tough and he's a guy that that that, that is, an, is a freak athlete in my opinion moving on um, I talk to Steve Novak aka Novocaine aka Swag Champ Steve has the belt uh, one of my favorite players in the NBA. One of my favorite players on, especially on the Knicks. Uh, just, just the fact of just his his shot ability, and every time you expect him to release the ball, it's just that it's just that you had the feeling that it's going in, or you stand to your feet as soon as he releases the ball. A guy who's a dead knockdown, dead three point shooter, one of the best three point shooters in the league. A guy that you need that that you're gonna need in the playoffs. Now everybody's gonna give him a bad rap because of what he did in the uh, in the playoffs against the Miami Heat, but you got to remember that the Heat, the way to beat the Heat is the way the Dallas Mavericks did. How Paige Stoyakovich was able to knock down a couple of three-point shots because they were able to get inside the lane against the Miami Heat. If you have a point guard that is able to get inside the lane against the Miami Heat, it, they have the Miami Heat is one of the best, if not the best, elite def, the perimeter defense team in the league. When you got LeBron, Wade, uh, ba, uh, Bosh, and, and Battier. But if you get inside, they're weak in there, and as soon as you get dribble penetration, it softens up that that outside. So it's going to give Steve Novak a couple of easier three-point shots, easier looks. 
like I said, Steve Nowak is a guy that is really going to help improve this team uh, going forward because you always need a knockdown three-point shooter. Uh, getting Kurt Thomas and, and, and Marcus Camby were huge, in my opinion. Uh, former Nick guys who know the guard, who know the expectations of the Nick fans. Yes, they're 30, 38, and 39 years old. Four of the top, two of the top oldest play, active players in the league. But um, those are guys that you need from a depth standpoint. Marcus can be a guy who can spell, who can play with Tyson Chandler or can back up Tyson Chandler, can play with Amari, can play with Melo. He's a guy that's versatile. He can play the four if he wants to, if Tyson wants to play the five. And you can have those guys grabbing rebounds a lot all day. So having a guy who started in, who started in Houston, guy who averaged nine rebounds, nine rebounds a night, guy who still block shots, a guy who's still an inter interior, a, 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 a significant interior presence. Where if if Tyson Chandler comes out, there's no significant drop off there. It's a little drop off because Tyson Chandler's Defensive Player of the Year. And Marcus Cam is a little bit older, and he's not the same player that he used to be. But it's still there. There's that per, there's that interior defense and that shot blocking ability still there. And Kurt Thomas, a guy who's tough, who's rugged, who can knock down a, a mid range shot along with Marcus Camby, um, a guy who could grab rebounds, mm -hmm. plays below the rim. So he's a guy that I, I think that's really going to bolster that front line depth. Those two players. Moving on to guys like um, um, Melo, you know what you're going to get from Melo. Come in shape a little bit be better. Um, embrace him and Amari have to embrace the team defensive aspect of it, talking and all that other stuff. But I think Carmelo Anthony, if he could just play his game, the, the, the type of player we know he can be, and just turn his game, twist and turn his game a little bit, the Knicks will be fine. And I think Amari is the biggest Nick to watch out for this year. If Amari can be the Amari of that we saw in the Miami game um, earlier this year, or the, the Amari that we saw last year when the, a Melo came to the Knicks and they went down to Miami and they beat Miami. Or the game one that we saw, even though they lost that game to Boston. They, if we see that Amari, this Nick team is significantly better than the Nick team that we had last year. And I think Amari Stoudemire being able to knock down that mid-range jump shot that was automatic for him last year and him being 100% healthy is going to help this Nick team out a lot. It's going to help him, it's going to help him a ton. Because you could tell the difference between those two t players. You could tell Amari wasn't healthy this whole season. Um, got hurt. Couldn't couldn't get Nick's treatment due to the lockout. Came in. He came in and, and he wasn't healthy. You could tell by the movement of the way he was playing, getting blocked by players who were 6'8". And he really, he would usually explode through those players. So I expect Amari to, to be the X factor of this Knicks team going forward. If the Knicks want to um, com compete to beat Miami and compete for a title, compete for the Eastern Conference Championship, or eventually, hopefully, an NBA title. Um, now moving on to um, the Jeremy Lin situation. Everybody knows about the Jeremy Lin situation. At 11.59 tonight, the Knicks have, there's the deadline for the Knicks to match the three-year, $25 million with the $14.6 million balloon payment in the third year um, that they're going to get. I'm kind of up in the air about it. I want Jeremy Lin. But then I don't want Jeremy Lin. Um, the first two years of the contract, he's going to get paid $10 million uh, over the first two years. Then he gets the big spike in, in payment. Kind of kind of like almost like the same kind of contract that Landry Fields got, who's in Toronto right now. But Lin's sanity to me was great. It was phenomenal. It was the most exciting time. It was the most exciting recent Nick memory that I ever thought of. It, 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 the Carmelo deal, yes. Being in the playoffs again, yes. The, the Knicks beating the Heat one game in the playoffs. Yes, Lin Sanity, I, in my opinion, topped that because it, it, it was something that it, it just it was just in your face. It was something the 38 points against the, the Lakers, hitting the game with a shot against Toronto, the the 28 and 14 against the uh, the Dallas Mavericks. Yes, all that was all fine. It was happy, but then Mike Woodson's Mike Woodson's the coach. This is not the same open type of system that he was in, and everybody wants to make the argument about Raymond Felton. Yeah, Raymond Felton had his best year as a Mike D'Antoni player. Yes, Raymond Felton was 17 and 9. Who had the better numbers? Lynn or Felton? I'm taking Felton. But going back to the Jeremy Lynn situation. Um like I said, Jeremy Lynn, everybody's saying that oh, the Knicks it's going to be the biggest mistake ever. Is it really going to be the biggest mistake ever? You remember when everybody used to, to complain about the Knicks when they gave Ter Curry that money? Or they gave all these other players, Jerome George, that money. Oh, they only had one good year. Why is Dolan throwing all this money towards a player? Everybody remember that? 
now when the Knicks are not thinking about bringing back a player who had two very uh, two phenomenal weeks, now everybody's upset that Dolan doesn't want to pay the money. Event probably allegedly he doesn't want to give him that money. That you can't win if you're a Knicks fan. If 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 you don't want them, you hated when they used to give old those type of players money. But now you want them to give Lynn the same type of money that those other players were getting. I don't understand. But like I said, um, the other thing that really got me frustrated about a lot is everybody saying that this this Jeremy Lynn thing is going to affect the Knicks financially. Number one, Dolan is a billionaire. Do you really think Dolan cares about the luxury tax? Maybe he does more than he did before. But remember, this is the same type of owner that paid $117 million on a payroll of salaries um, a couple of years ago when he had, when um, Antonio, I think Antonio McDyess, Stephon Marbury was on this team, um, all, all those other players, I think Eddie Curry was on that team too, Zach Randolph was on that team. It, it, so to me, the only reason if the Knicks do not bring Jeremy Lin back is because Grunwald, Dolan, and Mike Woodson do not believe going forward they will help this team right now be able to be title contenders and I don't have a problem with that do I think Lincoln has the potential to be a, a good player yes in that 15 to 11 range I can name a lot of point guards that that are that are not better than Jer that are better than Jeremy Lin in the East Coast I can say Jameer Nelson is better than Jeremy Lin I can say John Wall Brandon Brandon Jennings Drew Holiday Rondo Westbrook Nash remember every the Knicks wanted Nash before the first first player that they wanted was Nash Tony Parker, Rookie Rubio, all those players are better than Lynn. So everybody's really going to get in an up, uproar if we don't. Goran Dragic, better than Jeremy Lynn. Kyle Lowry, better than Jeremy Lynn. So we're really, those names, are we really going to get into an uproar because the Knicks don't want to bring back a kid that had his best two years, best two weeks in a D'Antoni offense where any point guard can, can, can inf influence numbers? No, I'm not going to, I'm not. I'm not believing it. Do I don't I think there's a slim chance he could be a great player, a top seven to five point guard in that top five. I I, re, I hardly think he'll be in the same breath as Rondo, Paul, Williams, Nash, and Parker. I I, I don't think he'll be that type of player. So I don't think I, the money's not the issue. It's basketball. Really, do you really think a basketball reason why that Jeremy Lin? Did you see something from a basketball standpoint that Jeremy Lin is will be better for the Knicks in the in the immediate future, as in next year, the following year, and the year after where all those contracts are up? Do you think Jeremy Lin can help this team, or do you think uh, the combination of Raymond Felton and and um and Jason Kidd, if 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 Lin comes back and that gives us depth, I'm fine with it. But that's something that everybody needs to talk about. And everybody wants to talk about, like I said, with Raymond Felton before. Oh, 